I'm sorry I can't be with you in person today, as I just must attend the Council of Ministers responsible for telcos and digital economy here in Brussels. We will be having important discussions with those ministers, in particular on the Commission proposals for a connected continent, creating the telco single market, but also on other proposals, on electronic identification, on cybersecurity, and on reducing the cost of broadband rollout. Those measures all contribute directly to the digital single market, which you are also focusing on today. The Commission plans on telecoms and on the digital single market have already been endorsed by EU leaders in the European Council when they met in late October and now we are moving into an intense period of negotiations. The views and interests of your association are important in those negotiations. We need to take account of the bigger picture when considering the role and importance of ICTs in growth and economic development. Because the world is changing, services are going online using the benefits of the borderless internet, Every part of the economy is coming to rely on fast digital networks, the networks provided by a healthy, dynamic telco sector. And it's time for us, too, to move to the next step and give that sector the single market boost. My vision is for a dynamic and competitive EU telco sector, a market where larger operators active across several member states compete alongside many smaller companies, more local and nimble. A market where a range of tailored products meet the sophisticated communications needs of every citizen and every business. A market that looks forward to tomorrow's digital opportunities, not backwards to yesterday's unsustainable revenues. Smaller challenger operators have long been vital drivers to competition in Europe, and I don't intend to change that. That competition will prosper well in the market we are creating, so providers can become agile, adaptable and able to innovate to meet the varied needs and preferences of their customers using, for example, new assured quality of service products. They will benefit, for example, from lower administrative burdens, such as a single authorization and harmonized consumer rules. So if you want to work across borders, you can do that more easily and without facing massive extra cost or red tape. As part of my work to present the Telco single market proposals, I visited Latvia in early October. There I met with the president of LICTA, Mrs. Balina, and also with Prime Minister and other members of the government to discuss our proposals and to discuss the need for greater efforts to develop and promote the digital economy. While in Riga, I was very impressed by the dynamic and competitive market for telco services, by the scale and spread of broadband networks, and by the commitment of government and industry to develop the digital economy in a forward-looking competitive environment. I want to preserve and promote that. Our proposals will continue to support competition, investment and innovation, creating a stable and predictable regulatory framework. More transparent contracts and easier switching of providers will favor those providers who genuinely offer the best deal. New harmonized wholesale products will make it even easier to provide pan-European services, making competition work better and competitive market entry easier. More consistent obligations imposed on European dominant operators will provide greater regulatory certainty for cross-border access seekers and improve their capacity to operate and compete. I know much commentary has focused on our proposals on roaming, but my views are clear. Roaming surcharges belong to the past. Those charges are a major irritant to European citizens and to companies doing business in different countries. They are an obstacle to new digital development, a throwback to borders that are supposed to have disappeared. And they are on their way out, as many market analysts agree. Our proposal brings that to an end not by endless price regulation, but by encouraging new pan-European deals onto the market, introducing Rome like at home in a way that is competitive, market-based and entirely voluntary. 
operators have the option to gradually adjust their retail offers. And we made it possible for smaller operators too to benefit from this option without needing to depend on the bigger players. And we have ensured a fair use provision to be determined by the local regulator so that the ability to use your, mo uh, your mobile bundle abroad does not create an unfair burden in those countries where prices are low. That is essential. Ultimately, the surplus surcharges for roaming and calling across the EU borders have to be removed. Businesses and citizens are operating across a single market and they increasingly depend on communications as they do so. Unjustified extra costs for crossing borders are at odds with the whole basis of that single market. We are guiding the market towards what it needs, the sustainable revenues which can fund long-term investment. Within a competitive single market that stimulates the wider use of high-speed technologies, boosting employment and economic growth. Those are the aims of our proposal for a connected continent. They are the way to secure a telco sector that is strong, healthy and competitive, able to innovate and invest. They are the way to support an economy and society increasingly dependent on connectivity. And they are the way to deliver a true digital single market worth 110 billion euros a year to the economy. Nobody in Europe can afford to turn their backs on that opportunity. And I hope I can count on your support. I wish you a stimulating and productive conference. And I thank you. <laughs>